Many years ago, I wanted to generate some ODT documents, and so I decided to create a program that would generate them. So let's look at how an ODT document is actually structured. So I have this ODT document right here in place, and it's currently open. Basically, I just listed a few different things. Um, I put bold, italics, underline, strikeout, red, green, blue, then I put some backgrounds right here so that you could see what things look like. You can also look at the properties right here and you can look at these descriptions I put in here. So title, subject, keywords, lots of things. So you can see how this all works and how, how it looks. So generally when you create open document text files for LibreOffice or for OpenOffice, what you're really creating is a zip file with a bunch of XML documents inside of it. So if you wanted to see what's inside of it, you can rename this document to a .zip file extension. And you can see it wants to know if I want to do that. And I say yes. Then I can right click and I can extract all. And I can see that it will extract to this directory. All right. Now, there are a lot of files in this directory, and so I want to look at each one of these things and show you what's in them. First of all, um, some of these files have no importance. For example, the configurations too, all these things are basically empty. So I could just go ahead and delete that directory if I wanted to, because I don't need it. It's useless. The thumbnails has a document, a, a, actually a picture inside of it that shows me what it looks like. That also is not necessary, so I could delete that as well. All right. Once that's out of the way, you start looking at the other files in here. Meta.inf shows contents. It lists what's in the in this actual document. So I could look at this one right here. If I right click and I can view it with my XML editor. All right, this is what the document looks like. And you can see that it lists individual files inside of here. So if I wanted to make it down to the bare minimum, I could erase some of these things. So let's go ahead and actually use a normal editor. So I'll use Notepad++. All right, with Notepad++, I can see what's in it. It lists right here that this is a OASIS document. OASIS is the standards organization that has created the standard. We can see that it says that they have a configuration two, configuration two files in here. We can just delete all of that because that is not necessary. And we can see that it has the styles thing. Styles is not necessary. It doesn't really do anything useful. Manifest RDF is not useful, so we can take that out. What we really care about is the meta.xml and the content.xml, and we also care about, that's it. So we can erase the rest of these things. And we get down to just a bare minimum. And this is what we need for our manifest right here, is just this meta.xml and this content.xml. Meta is nice because that's where you set your uh, properties for your document and content is where the actual content of the document what you type in there is. So I save that. Let's go ahead and close this. Back here I can delete these other things that are not useful. This thing right here and uh, settings and styles. <clears throat> settings has a bunch of boolean variables you can look at. Um, let's take a look at this notepad. Plus plus, you can see lots of different variables in here, um, and we don't care about these things. So let's close that, and we'll delete it. Styles has some of these general styles that are default styles. Um, nothing is really important in here because it's all automatically generated by the document editor. We take a look right here, and it's a bunch of XML. Um, nothing here is really important because nothing's really used. Okay, so we delete that. Now we look at the actual document, the stuff that's important. So meta.xml. Let's take a look at this one right here. 
Uh, when you go into Meta XML, you can see that there are different pieces in here. It starts with the uh, Office Meta tag. And it closes with an Office Meta tag. And then you have other things like creation date. Creation date is written in your ISO standard date format. Um, it isn't necessary for the document to function, so you could delete that if you wanted to create your own. You can look at the editing cycles. That's the number of times you got in there and edited it. We don't care about that, so we can delete that as well. The editing duration, the total amount of time you spent editing the document, which we don't care about. Then you look at descriptions. Do you care about your description? Yeah, maybe. And you can delete that if you want. Keywords, you can delete those. So we get a much smaller the subject. Yeah, we don't care about that either. Maybe we want to have a document title because that's kind of nice. So this is the document title. And we can take out the date because we don't care when it was generated, when it was created. The generator is the Office Suite product that you use to edit this. So if I wanted to have my own generator list here, I could say my, well, generated using Notepad++. Plus plus. And no one really cares because no one looks at that. Then you have your statistics about the document. We can just delete all these statistics and be fine. So really all you need for this meta section is just things like your title, which are really optional anyway. And we can go ahead and save that and close it. All right, now the last one is our content.xml. This is the one that contains the actual document and the formatting, things like the bold and underline and italics. So let's open it with an XML editor so you can see it easier first. We scroll down here, we can see this big long thing in the front that says, yeah, this is a document. And then we have a list of fonts that are potentially used. Not all of them are used. Uh, I use Liberation Mono, Liberation Serif, and Liberation Sans. The rest of the stuff is not used. You scroll down a little more, and it has these automatic styles. These are styles that are created automatically when I do things like press bold it will then indicate that sections are particular styles. You can see that we have paragraph styles with the P indication there. And you have the T styles for text styles. We go scroll down a little lower and finally get to the actual office body. And the office body, you can see we have different things that are not there. And then we have the actual contents. So each one is a paragraph. Start with a P1 tag because it's paragraph style one, or P2 because it's paragraph style two. Inside of these, you have individual sections of text. And these are your text styles one, two, three, four, and then you go down to paragraph, the next paragraph, five, six, seven. And you can see bold, italics, underline, strike out as the actual text inside of these. And below you can see colors, red, green, and blue, red, green, and blue. And then you have the other text around it, such as the colors include and backgrounds include with commas and ands. And the last paragraph, which is paragraph style two, it looks at fonts and you can see how they are done. So those are text styles 14 and 15, and we scroll up and we go look and see what are these styles actually. And you can see in these styles, the liberation styles are down here at the bottom. You can see T14, it says uh, style, text, properties, style, font, name. You can see the name right there. And in T13, you can see these are background colors. Um, well, you see the background colors and they have 0, 0, 80, 0, 0. you have 0, 0, 0, 0, 80, and you have 0, 0, 0, 0, 80. so you can tell well what colors are those i guess the background colors just trying to make it so you can see them um and you can scroll up and see 
um, font colors, and you can adjust everything. If you want to create your own style tags, you can create a style tag that includes what you wanted in it. Oops. So, um, for example, if I wanted to have a, um, a line through style, I could have a line through style. I could also have underline and I could also have italics and I just put all of these different things inside of a T tag that indicates what I want to do. And you can throw them all together and make whatever you want. So now with the small edits I've made, I've removed a few things, um, basically cleaned up the document. I can close this and I can, well, remake the document. So let's close these. All right. So if I uh, double click on the zip file, you can see what's in it. So I can go ahead and delete things. Let's say I want to delete the configurations two, delete thumbnails. So this is quick, quickly. So I want to do the manifest, um, settings, styles, delete all of these. I go back to the uh, directory, grab these files, and I can copy them and go into the zip file and paste them. And copy and replace. Replace, replace. And then the meta.inf file. Copy that over as well. And get that one pasted in there. All right, now I have the zip file all matching the directory structure. And I can rename it back to the ODT, ODT file type. And I can open it up and take a look at it. And you can see it's still here. Um, and just to make sure you, you know what I actually did and to make, make sure you know that I did something, I will go and look at the properties. And you can see that the subject, keywords, comments are all gone. Generally, you can see that these are all back to zero, no editing time. It's all been cleaned up. And so you know that this document is the new one I just, well, modified one I cleaned up. So that's what a open document text document looks like.